Hello friends, family, other creatures of the sea, welcome back to another high level game of StarCraft 2. Today we have in our bottom left spawning as the red Protoss player. You can already see who it is by the Sidestorm logo flying around his nexus. It is Max Pax. And in the top right as our blue Terran player, lacking a barracks in the main base, which we see positioned in the natural instead. Also with that Sidestorm logo around the main building, this time it's the command center. Of course it's going to be special. Game between Max Pax and Special, the teammates on Glittering Ashes. The Special opens up with a barracks be, well, beneath his uh, minerals, or above his mineral line, in the natural. SCV gets sent back in as well. Start building a depot here immediately. It's always really scary for the Terran to send that SCV back immediately. Because if that gets spotted by the probe, your entire strategy just falls in the water. Just gets completely blasted. Depot gets lifted here as well. And that means that this probe will not be allowed to ever leave again. That is important because in that case the, well, the probe just can scout whether there is going to be a barracks over here or not. There is a zealot on the way. The question is will that zealot be cancelled? Was this a nexus before core? It was a nexus before core. Oh wow. With a zealot. Could still cancel that zealot though. It's not going to do that. Instead we'll chrono it and we'll see the stalker as well as a follow up here. Lots of gas in the bank immediately. We'll have to wait and see exactly what the follow-up is going to be for Max Pax. As the Reaper revealed itself in the main base, killed that probe, I guess. And we do see that one kill on the Reaper here. It means that Max Pax is aware that the barracks is close to home. He's going to follow this up with a Stargate straight away. So that makes its way across the map. We see the Stalker coming out as well. We'd love to see an Adept behind this, but I think it's just going to be another Stalker. Yep, there we go. Another Chrono Boost, another Stalker. Another day in the life of the Danish top player Max Pax. Um, I, I don't mind the second stalker. Um, it allows you to put on a lot of pressure on your opponent, which usually is a very good thing if you can put on pressure on your opponent. That's something you definitely do want to do. But the beauty of getting that adapt is that you just get it a little bit faster. Um, gas tends to be the limiting factor in this type of scenario. So yeah, if you can get the if you can just get that adapt out a bit quicker, it means you have slightly more pressure on the other side of the map. Now, first mine already did its job taking out one of these gate units. This stalker continues to micro, will take out this marine. Second mine is on the way, and that means that this stalker will now not be capable of going there anymore. Ooh. This Reaper might actually be capable of clearing the stalker. Ooh, missed a shot! Max packs, sloppy control there. Missing a shot on the Reaper means that the Reaper gets the kill. Two kills total now on this Reaper, one kill on this mine. I think that Stalker had two marine kills. So far though, 275 minerals and 50 gas lost on the side of Max Pax. Well, Special has only really lost, well, nothing. It's lost like uh, two marines. It's not all that much. Now also loses the Reaper, which is unfortunate. I still like the move out that our good friend Max Pax went for though. S oh my god, I don't like losing that Stalker for free. This is a third unit that gets taken out here. Phoenix does spot the fact that there's a Madifax, sees to pick up. Now gets a complete scout as well in towards the main base. The reason why I kind of like this opener here out of um, out of Max Pax, despite him losing all of his units, is because you just get such a, a clean scout of what is going on, right? If you send that first zealot across the map, you know whether it's uh, a mine or if it's going to be a cyclone or a tank first or a hellion first. You just get a lot of information, which tends to be quite important. I think this needs to, yeah, you can't, you can't do that, buddy. It's too difficult. Two extra gateways on the way, as well as a robotic facility right now. Now, the beauty for Max Pax here is that he's still actually ahead um, economically. That's important to note. He's up 10 workers, which is up more workers than he usually would be. His robotics facility is relatively quick. His Phoenix count is pretty healthy as well. This mine drop is moving into a position where I don't think Max Pax is entirely ready for it. But that means that some workers will need to be pulled away. One of these mines is going to get lifted, so only a single mine will shoot. Two workers will end up going down in the meta fact. I am not sure if this actually gets to escape. Phoenixes are going on a wild goose chase here, but this goose uh, is about to run out of booster. These Phoenixes should be capable of catching it. If Max Pax really would have wanted it, I think he would have caught it. I think he prefers just going across the map because he needs some more scouting information. I would agree with him that that is more Im important currently. He wants to know whether the opponent is moving out or not. We already see a battery on the third base. We do not quite have a battery in the natural. Robo Bay is on the way and a blind immortal has been built as well. An immortal... Oh, what did that... What is this? What in the world is this? 
Okay, this is a really important observer. Like, crazy important. This cannot be allowed to go in. Add on. Under any Your circumstance. It's going to be attack. double starport battlecruiser. Uh, oh yeah, it's spotted. Right? Has it been spotted? It feels like the movement makes it look Command like it's been spotted, operate. but maybe it hasn't been. You can see it if you especially if you use the zoom function, it makes it a lot easier to see. If this observer ever decides to go in, that would be terrible here for special. If the Phoenixes ever get in and see this, that would also be terrible for special. The funny thing is, is that battle cruisers are actually good against Phoenixes. Oh, scans the observer, that's important. Because battle cruisers have a crap ton of armor, Phoenixes have double attacks. Especially if you get Yamato, you can just take out two Phoenixes. Usually you need at least a battery, and ideally you also are going to need a Void Ray. If he just teleports those two battlecruisers across the map, I think the game might just end here immediately. I don't think there's anything that Max Spex has that can deal with that. We have a uh, Yamato cannon on the way already. Oh, here comes a Hallucination Scout. Important Hallucination Scout as well. He's going to see this battlecruiser, even if it's only 10 seconds ahead of time. Those are 10 very important seconds where you can start building a battery. I said where you can start building a battery. Perhaps you can start building a battery in your main, in your third base. We see a scan in towards the third and a uh, teleport in towards the next one. Immediately units are getting getting warped in. Uh, four or five probes get taken out. Okay, look at these BCs go. These uh, Phoenix is not quite strong enough to deal with them. It always looks so silly, Phoenixes against BCs. Because it's so many Phoenixes and so little BCs. And this PC isn't actually targeting on the Phoenixes. That is a mistake. I think four Phoenixes have gone down already. Four workers have gone down as well. I think two Stalkers might have fallen too. A couple more of these probes will get taken out. And these Phoenixes will once again go on the chase. Like I said before, they don't actually do a lot of damage. If that battlecruiser on the left side had continued fighting the Phoenixes rather than the army that was on the bottom left, I think this could have ended way, way better here for Special. It still is not necessarily bad. He has... Oh my god, he has a hidden base. This feels like... Like he's strolling almost. This is how some people used to play back in like... I was it, like 2010, 2011? Like this type of stuff, you know, mass battle cruiser, hidden bases, tricky to play against, but really not that tricky. Fleet beacon being constructed right now here in the natural. You also have double void rays on the way. Now the funny thing with void rays is, is that they don't quite get one shot by Yamato, but you need to do a little bit of damage to them and then you can Yamato them and then they'll die. As a follow up here, we have, I guess... I was going to say mech, but we literally just have a single factory pumping out units. We have constant marine production as well. So it's 22 marines, 23 marines without any upgrades, 3 battle cruisers, and 3 tanks. It's not a massive army, but it... Yeah, well, no, it's just not a massive army. And especially it's a poorly upgraded army. Without battle cruisers, there's almost no damage output whatsoever. This hallucination is going to spot the battle cruiser move out. That's kind of big. Allows you to go catch them. Tempest are on the way right now, so initially the Void Rays are here to, to kind of tank the initial hit, I would say. Um, and then the Tempest come in to really start dealing some damage. Now the problem with Void Rays, like I said... Ooh, for a couple of... Did you just snipe two Stalkers? Yeah, I think it did. I'm going to just teleport back home. Cooldown on that is rather long as well. More battle cruisers on the way, double armory being constructed as well. The problem with constant battle cruise. Oh my god, he has so much money. He's literally fro floating 1500 minerals right now. And that is not necessarily because he's bad. Um, it's not like Special doesn't know that floating 1800 minerals is bad. It's just because he can't really produce anything. PCs cost so much gas, tanks cost so much gas. It really feels like there's nothing he can really spend his money on except for four extra command centers. Maybe he should then invest in those command centers, you could say. I probably would agree with that. 1-1 one, one is starting to be researched. Here come the Tempest. Void race trying to overcharge right now. There's a lot of Marines still on the ground. These tanks are not siege. I think Special is actually winning this engagement so far. Cyclones on the ground also dealing a lot of damage. Do we still have any Amados left? I do not quite think so. Cyclones taking out a Colossi for free as Air Weapons Level 1 finishes up here for Max Packs. He's going to end up losing that one Tempest that he had. There's two more Tempests out, apparently. I'm not quite sure where they are. Okay, in the far back. Disruptors coming in as well will, of course, help. 
cannons, batteries, fifth base on the way. 83 workers here for max packs against the 94 of special. Special still floating 15, 1600 minerals. is adding two more starports, building five turrets at the same time as well. And Yamato is once again available. That means that a couple of Tempest most likely will end up dying. With four battle cruisers, you can basically kill both of the Tempest here without any major issue. It's not going to be any extra factory unit, just pure battle cruiser it seems like. And this Nexus most likely is just going to fall as well. Not much here that special, uh, not, well, max packs can do about it. I'm going to try to use a super battery to heal the Nexus, but that super battery is out of range, so that definitely isn't going to be working. Nexus gets taken out, not the end of the world. But if special continues pushing forward with more turrets, it could be the end of the world. Especially if the eBay, well, do we have an eBay even? Yeah, we have an eBay, otherwise you can't build turrets. Stupid question. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing either the armor upgrade or the range upgrade for the turret. It would be super useful. Battlecruisers are going to teleport back home to deal with this uh, Zealot run by. They will be in time. Plus one, not quite done yet on the ship weapons, but doesn't matter. We'll be good enough to fight these Zealots anyway. So this tank marine army is going to start moving back home. Tempest count is growing, but it's not quite big enough yet. We have a lot of Vikings on the way, actually. Oh, I like this. This is just a pure air army here, with a couple of tanks, of course, on the ground, but really just a, a focusing on that air. I did not think of a Viking uh, transition. We still have two armies that are not doing anything, despite there being plenty of money for it. Zalat hasn't spotted that left side base yet. It is possible that Max Pax truly believes that his opponent is only on three bases, but for how much longer can he really believe that? I guess he's going to see the double expand soon. Then he'll be like, okay, that makes sense. You know, there's an expansion on the right side, expansion on the left side. Oh, no, 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 to this planetary. That means that this planetary is going to fall. At the same time, we have a massive zealot run by here towards the right side as well. Oh, yo, yo, all the tanks are going to get taken out. 16 workers already have fallen. We still have a bunch of SCVs over here as well. At the same time, though, these Archons, can they take out these Vikings? Stay active on the ground for now. Recall on these Tempest. So Tempest will stay alive, but this was a really good sequence of events here for max packs taking out 30 workers taking out a base taking out majority of the tanks as well that means that future run by towards this third base which is going to be ultra powerful sixth base is being taken fifth base is finishing up we have four stargates with a fifth on the way void race once again being produced i am still not sure about the void race i also have a theory that if the protos actually builds void race it's probably worth it to get Ghost, even if it's just two Ghosts. I know you're playing Mech, um, or well, Sky Terran, I guess. It sounds weird, you know, automatically want to say Sky Toss, but yeah. You, if the Terran plays Sky Terran, um, and the Toss counters with Void Rays and Archons, getting three EMPs is so, so worth it, right? Um, allowing Yamatos to one-shot Void Rays, um, Archons just to disappear of the face of the earth like these are generally good things that happen um, if you have emps so i would recommend that lots of marines over here viking count also relatively large problem is just that there's nothing to really deal with these archons of course they don't really have any shield upgrades either so it's not like they tank a crap ton of damage ship weapons level two about to finish up once again we have a zealot run by dealing way too much damage Vikings are going to get completely destroyed as well by these Archons. Battlecruisers just now showing up. Ship weapons level 2 are... Oh, oh my god, target down the Disruptor before anything happens. Can he jump on top of this army? I'm not quite sure if he can. Raven is here as well, potentially for an anti-armor missile. I love that addition here. This is one of the only times that I see a, a Raven being built just kind of randomly here in the middle. Of course, it's not randomly. It has a real purpose, but... Usually this type of Raven timing isn't seen. Usually we either see a Raven at the start of the game or we never see it. Now Special is in a world of trouble though. His supply is a lot lower. He's 150 against 200. His army supply is pretty healthy. Building a lot of Vikings as well, but his mining is practically non-existent. It's funny how well these Zealots do, despite not having any upgrades whatsoever. Plus three air weapons is on the way right now for Max Packs. He's getting... Uh, well, he's not getting much more because he's maxed. 
wouldn't mind seeing a couple of extra gateways. We're currently at 10. Just adding two to four gateways would probably be nice. Here come the Zealot once again. Start taking out a couple of SCVs. These Marines should be capable of taking care of these. Um, yeah, are indeed going to be capable of doing that. At the same time, Planetary will be sniped by all of these units. Here comes the anti-armor missile. Great blink on top of this entire army. Vikings dealing a crap ton of damage. We see the Yamatas going down as well. Tempest, Tempest, Tempest. All going to get taken out. Oh my god. This is an absolute massacre over here. We still have seven battle cruisers remaining. Mine does a, a number on these Void Rays as well. Uh, two kills on the mine. Not sure if both of these are Void Rays or... If there also was something else before that already. More Vikings being constructed right now. Five more Tempest on the way. Max Packs needs to somehow, some way remax. But Special has a massive army. He really has a massive army. There's no armor upgrades whatsoever. No shield upgrades on these Stalkers. And that's, an, that's a real issue. Vikings decide to land. I think that's a, an interesting call. I, th I actually think that Special is wasting his time here trying to catch these stalkers there's too much income for max packs max packs just wants to win time and every second you give the max packs is a great second for a while he was down way way in supply now actually the supply for max packs is going up once again he's up to 80 already sending a couple of zealots across the map i really do like that just making sure that you're killing workers at any any point in the game is good if i can stay at home for now we have six more Vikings on the way as well. We have one more BC on the way. The seven battle cruisers are moving in. We'll probably be capable of taking out this base. Need to be careful though. Yamatos, Yamatos. No, no. Just a blink. We'll blink back home. Or teleport back home. Whatever you want to call it. Mines being constructed two at a time. We have the smart servos. Which allows Hellions help at stores. No, did it say tours? No. Hellions, Hellbats, Vikings, and I think there's one more thing up there that I can't quite recall now. We just make that transition between the different modes a little bit quicker, which is of course important. Oh, maybe actually Thors as well. The transition between their different uh, damage outputs, of course. Anyway, lots of battle cruisers on the map right now. We're at 8. So many Vikings. Vikings aren't great against Archon Stalker, though. They're good against Tempest, but the real issue here is the ground army. The ground army is the real issue. Ooh, a couple of Yamatas on these Archons is the correct call indeed, and this army is getting completely pushed back right now. Tempest will not be capable of really achieving anything here with this many Vikings around. See a bunch of Stalkers moving forward. We'll snipe one of these battle cruisers. If the Tempest can just take out one or two BCs, that would already be huge. Then the ground army might just be capable of doing the rest. You're going to need an oracle, though, to really tag this army. Oh, that's a shot. That's a free shot. Every free, sh free shot is great there. Archons once again shooting on these Vikings. Oh, turns around. Takes out, what was that? A battle cruiser. One more BC gets taken out. Massive blink under all of these BCs. But not enough armor upgrades means that these BCs are going to stay alive. The SCV trail just, just trailing behind these, uh, these BCs, trying to repair them as well as they can. Vikings moving back should be moving forward instead to try and zone out these Tempest. I actually think that Special needs to jump on top of this. He can't be going back and forth the entire time. That's definitely a mistake. Uh, another blink forward and I think the income is just a little bit too high here for Max Packs. PC count is dwindling. And with these Vikings falling as well, that is going to be it. GG gets called. Max Packs wins this game over here on Glittering Ashes. The two-port battlecruiser into six-star port. Battlecruiser Viking was not quite good enough. Too weak against the run buys that were plentiful from the side of Max Packs and lots of SCVs. I actually kind of want to see how many ended up dying. Um, 60 SCVs ended up going down. Yeah, that's just a little bit too much. 11 BCs, 13 Tempest, and 20 Void Rays. Raven was very useful, um, died after it casted one anti armor missile. It wasn't useful enough. That's going to be it for me today. Thanks all so much for watching. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hopefully I'll see all of you next time for a new video. Thank you, and bye-bye.